kijk uit van vandaag. Dus het uh, eindelijk lekker lekker lang ja, we ik zo met elkaar. En uh, ik wil je allemaal welkom en dat welkom voel. En uh, dat jullie zelfs vandaag bij Panorama hebben geniet. Ik ga niet die uh, hevelijks van denken en verjaarste um, uitlees. Op die 19 september, François Leroux en Sissy Osner en Vicky Paltry. Op de 20 september, dus Kylie Enslin en Kobus van Staren. Op die 23 ste is Christiane Vergatoni. En ons hevelijks bedenkings, op die 20 september is Ewit en Denise Leroux. Op die 23 ste is Karel en Yvette Leroux. En op die 24 ste is François en Vivian Potgete. Um, I wish you guys all the best. I uh, pray that the Lord is with you for your next year of not only your marriage, but also your personal birthdays. Um, <clears throat> is there any uh, gebedsverzoeken? Ons sê die afgelopen paar weke vir my oom gebed, wat uh, jy op vervanging gehad het, en dat is net die ene ding na die ander ding, en um, hy is ongelukkig in die week oorlede, en ek vooral dat ons, asjeblief die familie, sal opdra in gebed. Hi, morning. Um, there's a, a lady, in, a young lady in uh, West End Church. Her name is Yolanda. She's in hospital. I'm not sure what's going on, but we want to uh, pray for her. I don't know if Pastor wants to elaborate on that, but can we just keep her in our prayers? She's in ICU, what I understand from the messages I've got. Yolanda? Yolanda. Uh, ek wil graag aan, aan my kleinkinders dink, hulle is bezig met examens, en ek wil net vir die heren vraag, dat hy met hulle sal wees, terwijl hulle voorbereid vir hulle toekomst. Ons sal net vir asjeblief vir my Gertie van Deventer, hy het kanker asjeblief, en ook al nie geweet, want hy, ons mis om iets over die kerk, om Gertie het waar. Ik wil jullie nog op verzoeken, maar ik wil een dankgebed opzetten. Um, die zaken zitten, het pijk afgeloop. En dat was een van ons beste zaken zitten, sure. wat ons gehad het. Ik was zo so blij om niet politiek te aan te zien. Nie. Die mensen was in drachtig. En je kon die heilige geest het teenwoordigheid gevoel het tussen die mens in die saal. Nou net vir die Heere ook dankie sê vir sy leiding, wat hy gegeet om die um, nieuwe Amstelaars aan te stel. En dan wil ek ook vraag, dat ons ook net een speciale gebed sal hou, ook vir ons, een nieuwe leiderskap wat ons moet aanstel, en dat die Heere ook sal onderneem. Amen. Ok, ehm, um Stil versoek, dankie. Ok, en blij harte. Ok, dat is goed. Ok, maak toe, jongen, asjeblief. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able, able to bow our heads before our great master. We love and we care about. We thank you, Father, for caring for each one of us, individually in our problems and in our walks that we struggle with. Father, you've heard the requests of our church today. Father, you've heard about Yolanda and about Gerke, Father. I ask you to be with both of them and to counsel the families as well as the physicians on the best route to take. Father, I ask you to be with Monet and his family and the family of his uncle. His loss is never a nice thing, Father. Let me ask that you would um, be in their hearts, Father. Father, we also want to thank you um, for the the general session that just happened for our Northern Conference and choosing the leaders. We ask you, Father, to ordain them, ordain them with the Holy Spirit that your work will go out and that your message will reach the hearts that it needs to reach. And also, Lord, to be with our hearts 
and also with our new session also coming up to choosing our leaders for this church. We pray for those that have got silent requests, Father. Each one of us actually do have a silent request. We pray for each one of those. And also, Lord, we are grateful, we are thankful, and we are blessed to be here together with you. I ask you to be with each one of us, that our minds will be stirred with Christ, and that our hearts will be given over to him today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, we have the mission offering video, and during the mission offering video, can we have the deacons um, take up the, the service call offering? Thank you. Dit is nooit te laat om in Godse voetsporen te volg nie. Laura na Pauli Gonzalves word liefdevol dier haar mere kerkletmalde aangesprek as oma Laura. Op 75-jarige ouderdom het sy te hore gekom van die 7-dagse Adventiste kerk toe haar kleindochter haar daar dier uitgenooi het. Oma Laura het vastgegloe aan spiritistische gebruike, maar so is sy met die waarheid te doen gekry het dier middel van bybelstudie en die bywoning van kerkstienste en ander geleentede het haar hart geleidelik gevul met die liefde vir Christus. Selfs voordat sy in die doobad ingegaan het, het Laura actief deel geneem aan evangelisatie. Sy het ook onder andere gehelp om besoekers te groet by die bid uur en kos in te sommel verbehoeftig is. Sy is vooral lief daarvoor om Ellen White sy boeken te lees. Die belangrijkste ding vir Laura is om kerk toe te gaan en om by haar kerkfamilie te wees. Sy woon altyd die dienste by, ongeag koue weer, reen of intense hitte. Laura is vooral lief vir die week van gebed. Al hierdie liefde het daartoe geleid dat sy op 13 december 2015 op die ouderdom van 80 dier die doobad gegaan het. Laura het aangesluit by een georganiseerde groep wat die woord van God en die goeie nies van verlossing der Jesus na die gemeenskap geneem het. Sy is een getrouwe christen, sendeling en gever. Haar lewe toon aan steeklike vreugde omdat sy deel is van die Adventiste familie. Oma Laura is een levendige getuie daarvan dat die beste plek om te wees is aan die voete van Jesus. Sy sien uit na Jesus' tweede komst wanneer sy vir altyd by hom kan wees. Oma Laura is betrokken by die sending en maatskaplike projekte van die kerk en sluit in die opbrug van een nieuwe kerkgebouw waar al die gemeenskaplede geakommodeer kan word. Die gebouw wat die kerk op die oomlik hier is heeltemal te klein en het ook nie aparte vertrekke vir die kinders en jeug nie. Hulle kom buiten by mekaar waar hulle blootgestel aan die stadsverkeer hitte en slechte weers toestande. Hierdie kwartaalse 13de sabbat offergove sal help om kerke in Suid-Amerika op te rig en sluit in die een in Oma Laura'se dorp. Daar sal soveel vreugde wees wanneer kerklid moet die saam kan aanbid in hierdie nieuwe gebouw waar die jeug en kinders veilig benuis kan wees. Bid asjeblief vir hierdie groep en ander dwars dier Suid-Amerika. Dankie dat u bijdra tot die 13e sabbats offergave. Okay. Come on, come to it. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that we have the ability to, to give some ourselves for the mission work that needs to happen. Father, we know that there's much that needs to happen. So we thank you for every cent that we are able to give to you. And Father, we ask you to help us to give more so that the work can go out faster. Also pray for the message this morning, Lord, and you'll be with us and you'll prepare the soul of our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. All right. This morning... Uh, I have a, a little bit of a different structure. I'm going to try and beat the time that's left, which I think is going to be impossible. So I think I'll be cut short on this one. Um, instead of doing a uh, the way I normally do it, I try to do it in application and testimony because I believe we need to hear more testimonies. And from this testimony, I hope we we also have an application from it. 
Um, so it's called fill our church and, or fill our hearts. So traditional truth and entertainmental truth. Matthew 15 verse 8. This people draws nigh unto me with their mouths and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and the commandments of men. This is my friend Andy Weaver. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Andy Weaver. You know who he's about or heard any of his testimonies. He's an interesting man. I don't know him personally, but I really like what he's doing and I like what his background is. So he comes from a totally different life. He doesn't have what we have. He doesn't have electricity, indoor, indoor um, heating or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> in fact, um, up until recently, he'd never even been in a driving position of a car. Uh, he comes from a very conservative family and a long life of Anabaptists. I don't know if anybody knows about the Anabaptists and their, their history. But the history of the Anabaptists, their German uh, origin, um, they actually believed in baptism by immersion. And that was totally unheard of around the 1500s, 1600s. Um, they, strict, they stick strictly to the Lutheran Bible that as their main Bible. They believe that is the Bible that should be um, the main Bible. And when they discovered baptism, the um, people would call them Anabaptists. And uh, what happened is they would get persecuted from the Catholics and from the, uh, the Protestants. And eventually it got to the point where they said, okay, you want to, to baptize underwater? That's fine, we'll baptize you. And they would hold their heads and their feet behind their necks and keep them underwater until they drowned. So they were hated by medieval Christians and Protestants, Christians alike. Um, and they escaped all over, not only to America, they came to a few places. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the Amish were actually just one group through the 1800s when they arrived in, in America. And they never really departed from that. It's only in 1913 to 1917 when um, you had an um, industrial uh, position take over our world that they started saying, okay, do we take on some of these things or don't we? What do we do? And what happened is uh, there was this guy called Samuel Swatson Truber, and he had decided, no, we, cars, vehicles, anything with technology, we'll leave out, even indoor, indoor water and all these other things. And they became the most conservative out of the groups of the Amish. And the other groups had decided to take on little pieces on, yeah, so some have tractors, some have, some have running water in their houses, but they actually live a very plain and, in a way, an uh, admirable lifestyle because of the way that they bond together. I mean, they don't, they don't believe in insurance. So what happens is your barn burns down. Um, the whole community takes up what they have spare because everybody originally buys spare for emergency. Your barn burns down. The next couple of weeks, that's all they're doing is building your barn. It doesn't cost you a cent. But the community pays for it. And it's the same with medical bills. Your children go in and they, they look after each other. It's a totally uh, family-bound community. <clears throat> so Annie uh, Weaver is actually the great-grandson of, uh, of Samuel um, Swatson Schuber. Okay, so three questions we have to ask about the Amish. And this gets important later. It's not really important for now, but just to give you some background. Do the Amish really know their Bibles? I mean, when you think of Amish, you think of these heavy conservative Bible people that don't leave their Bibles. That's all they do. Um, would they leave their Bible beliefs for tradition? That's, a, that's an interesting question which we'll answer now. And do they still continue to baptize by immersion? So it's actually interesting. None of those three exist in the Amish church. Um, in fact, most of the Amish only um, are allowed to read the Bibles on Sunday. That's it. And it's only brief, and it's usually in the New Testament and part of the four Gospels. They don't actually have a very solid foundation in Bible knowledge. They actually are very, um, not primitive, but uh, naive in it because tradition has taken over. And when new doctrine from the Bible comes across, they say, do we choose tradition or do we choose the new doctrine? They always go with tradition. Um, because of a verse in 1 Timothy 3 that basically says that what you know you should always do. And it's a bit misapplied, which Andy explains in his own, in his own deliberations. And they don't baptize by immersion. The very reason they became separate is, is 
non-existent anymore. Okay, so why am I telling you this? Well, Andy Weaver, um, in desperation, he started studying his Bible. And he started looking for the truths. He wanted to know more about these truths that we, we have. Um, he wanted to understand why the Bible says certain things in certain places. And he couldn't put the things together. And um, he started developing questions. And uh, what happened is he landed up a job on an atheist's farm that was close to his house. Now, obviously, you know the Amish, they, they drive these little carts, and they get in the cart, and they, they call them buggies. And it's got a roof and everything, so they don't have to suntan. And uh, he goes to work every day, and he comes back, and this atheist got very sick. And he, he loved this atheist, even though the guy was an atheist. And eventually, the atheist come to him, came to him and said to him, Andy, I have to sell my farm. Um, I'm not doing well. I need to go into the city. I need someone to start taking permanent care of me. And he was very sad to hear this, and he had decided, oh, you, you know, whatever happens, happens. And a new family bought over this farm, and his brother got involved with this family by helping them move. And Andy went there to, to see what, what these people had to say, because these people were strange. They didn't eat meat, they didn't have dairy, they believed that God's law is God's law, they were conservative in most regions. They didn't use TVs. So this, this really intrigued this guy. He was like, no, I want to I see. So he started working for this these couple. And he would bring them questions, and they would always have an answer. And this amazed them. The wealth of knowledge that he said came from these people was, was, was massive. So he was given two, two books. We know them, Desire of Ages and Quite a Great Controversy. He read Great Controversy over and over and over. And... Being from an Amish background, he was, wow, this, 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 is, this is new stuff. This is like real technology to him. And uh, eventually they gave him the Desire of Ages. But he said when he read Desire of Ages, he fell in love with Christ. And when that happened, he stopped thinking like an Amish. He stopped thinking like a Christ-like person. Okay, so he accepted the truths of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, there's something interesting that happens in the Amish community, even though they developed lots of splits, and they have a strange way of splitting. If someone is conservative and inside that group, and there's a, there's a disagreement, the conservative group leaves, and the, the people that, that aren't so conservative stay. So this kept it happening, and this is why the Swartz and Truber is still, still a part of itself. But what happens is, if one of them default on any of the traditions, all of the groups will shun that person. So they won't do business with that person. They won't be allowed to sit with them and eat with them. They're not allowed to talk to them. Um, thanks to Andy, a lot of those things have changed. Um, a lot of the Amish are actually apostatizing in their own traditions because he is able to sit with his family even though he's not Amish anymore. He's a Seventh-day Adventist with an Amish lifestyle. Culturally, they're still Amish. But belief interior, they are Seventh-day Adventist. Um, they have big families. So his grandparents um, have 200 grandchildren. It's crazy, eh? He says he's got like something like 100 first cousins and like 300 second cousins. <laughs> so he says he walks into town and everybody's his uncle, his aunt. It's, it's, it's interesting. So when you shun from your family, you shun from everything you know. You lose your identity. You lose everything. It's gone. So he accepted the faith and he shares his faith. All right. Um, it says that he learned a lot from, from the Amish community and um, he was asked, what could Adventists learn from the Amish? He says actually two things. To stand together, he says the Amish have a, a phenomenal background when standing together, that when one is down, no matter what they're standing or what anything goes on or how they feel about that person, everybody jumps in, they're one group. It reminds me of Acts 2, when everybody went into the, um, the upper room and they were one person during that time when they received the Holy Spirit. The second thing, he says, everything else is in your spirit of prophecy. That is, that is closest to the Amish heart in, in its ways. And we could learn from that. All right, lay not yourself up yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 
All right, so all of us have one thing in our lives when we think about it that we can't live without. Um, I put those as examples because those are the ones that people usually tell me. I will never be able to live without a car. Or my family, my family, you know, I could never give them up. My home. And the one I, at the bottom, I hear quite often. It's like, I could never give up coffee. I need coffee. If coffee doesn't happen, I don't exist. And uh, we have to think about these things. For where your heart, treasure is, there will your heart also be. So I want you to consider Andy's experience, his journey, what it cost him. He lost family, business, friendship, part of his identity for truth. It started out with the state of the dead. Then it came with the Sabbath. And then it came with all these other truths. And then he found righteousness by faith. And he says that changed him. He was so works orientated as a person because of the traditions were works orientated. Everything had to be based on that. But he found that the righteousness of Christ changed everything. That the life that Christ led was given to him as well. He says it was a totally new thing to him. Um, so consider the cost of the reformers and the cost to bring you your Bible. You, most of you have a Bible. Some of you have just your phone. Um, what did it cost them so that you can have this, this, this beautiful book? I actually just brought it up tonight, as a, this morning as a demonstration. Every time I open this thing up, it's, it's a new world. I learned something that I've never learned it used to be, when I read it, I was very dull and I battled to understand what's going. But now, I can't even just read something in Judges without sitting and thinking, wow. I mean, Judges, or Joshua, or Acts, whichever book you choose. And the ultimate sacrifice of Christ. So we receive what he deserved, and he received what we deserved. We deserve death, and he deserved life. but we gained life through him. And he took on our death. What amazing God. So I want you guys to consider the appeal to, to the ultimate desire, God's holy word. Each one of the books that are in this, this Bible are actually 66 testimonies of Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. They're about his love for you. And how he desires for you to understand his word, to open it up and meet with him every day. Gaining in knowledge and understanding, as he did. Can I live without the Bible and its truths? Those are questions we need to ask ourselves. First Timothy 6 or 7. We have brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. It is only character we can take with us. So why is this book different? Why is the Bible different to any other book in the planet? Have you thought about that? So look at the Quran or... And it's a, it's, it's a usual example. What about philo philosophical books? What about Oregon or Augustine, Socrates, uh, Plato? Why is this one different? Why do people more die, die more for this book than they do for philo philosoph <laughs> philosophy? And the question, the answer is, yeah. It's as simple as this. You search the scriptures... Or in them you think you have eternal life, but they actually, these are what, what testify of Christ. Okay, so three questions I would like you to answer yourself, ask yourself today. I'm definitely not going to be able to finish. Why are you here today? Why have you chosen Bible over tradition? And what is your motivation to go to heaven? All right. Certain reforms of Christianity believe in a vindictive God. You'll burn, and you'll burn, and you'll burn, and you'll burn, and nothing shall stop that. For eternity, you'll suffer, whether it be 15, 20 years of living on this earth, or 70 years. But do we come to church? Is that our motivation? If we do, then we have a problem. Because of that one sentence up there, it says, no one will go to heaven by avoiding hell. And when I heard that this week, I thought, sure, that's actually a very good presentation of the Bible. 
A lot of us want to avoid the burning. That's why we want to go to church. I would like to say that maybe we should think a little bit differently. That it should be a relationship with Christ that we're trying to, to gain. And avoiding being ourselves, rather. Because ourselves, well, we know the heart is continually evil. So I see I've got five minutes left, so I'm just quickly choosing what I'm going to be telling you next. Okay, I'll quickly do two minutes of this and two minutes of the last part. When we think of other people that have, are living an easy life, what we would like to say, look at the superstars and and people that are mega rich, we think, these guys never have to worry about a thing. We think, man, it's so unfair. We think of people getting jobs in our own country, and we think, we could, we could also apply for those jobs, but it's unfair because we're not allowed to. We think of all the unfairities of everything. But you, each one of you, have something that, that you have in your hand. For I was envious at, at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, there's 8 billion people on this planet. There are only 25 million Seventh-day Adventists. And of those 25, of the 8 billion, that's only 2.5%. Each one of you have a Bible. Many of those people have a Bible too. What's really unfair is that they don't know the truth. You go home today and you can pick up your Bible and you can, wow, it's so good that I know that when I die, I will never feel pain or death again. Whether I'm evil or not, whether it will be once off and eternity gone, we have comfort in both messages of God's mercy. They don't know this. Um, if you have poison, and you, you've ingested this poison, and in your hand you've got the cure. And you don't want to drink this poison out of disbelief. It is in the way the same as what we believe. We'll die with our Bibles in our hands if we don't exercise it. It doesn't help having the cure in our hands and we don't do anything. We don't ingest the cure. And we can't use poison to attract people either. We can't use hot chocolate and gummy bears to bring souls into Christ's church because that doesn't convert the soul. What converts the soul is God's word and what he's done for me. So I'm going to skip through the rest because there's too much. Um, I'm going to close off with Andy's church. Andy tried to get out of his community. He couldn't get out and uh, he kept on trying to leave, which is what Amos usually do. As soon as they shunned, they, they leave and God would not let it happen. Everything he tried. Eventually he just said, okay, fine. We build the church, yeah. And he built the church and it grew quickly with Amish. Seventh-day Adventist church filling up with Amish people. It's crazy. And then they built this thing and it's massive. He says, if I knew the cost from the beginning, I would never have it. Because it's just the air conditioning for that, that place is the cost of a, a normal Amish house. So he said, no way. I would have never done it. But they're almost filling this one as well. And now they have a school for the Amish children, for them to have a Seventh-day Adventist education. And everyone is welcome. No one is separate. And they do it in English, not Pennsylvania or Dutch, which is their, their, their language that they keep. So when you think of Andy, uh, think of West Salem missions. Think of someone that found truth. And he was decided, even if his wife decided she's not going to do it, and shun him as well, he would have done it. Because he found Jesus Christ. He found the love of his soul. Well, thank you. I think we can break up now for um, the Sabbath school lessons. And if we can just close our eyes just to end the session off. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your kindness and all the things you've shown us. We ask you, Lord, to give us that, that fire in our hearts to search your word, to testify of Christ, to know what he's done for us, to understand all the concepts of truth 
and to share it, Father. Let us not hide our bushel. Let us not keep the cure away from those that have been poisoned. Father, change our hearts, for it is our hearts that are the ones that withhold us from doing this. We thank you again for your kindness. We ask you for your blessing this day and for the rest of this weekend. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.